NBC Shaq Boucher now joins us live from Burlington, Vermont. So, Shaq, what's the latest on the investigation and on the student's recovery, especially Isham, who was so grievously injured? Yeah, the investigation still continues. We got a warning earlier this week that this will be an extensive investigation, that authorities are not calling it a hate crime at this point, but they say that it was clearly an act of hate, and they want to do more investigating before making that designation if one is to come. Meanwhile, you talk about the recoveries. Hishan, he is still uh, in the hospital right now. His parents are saying that he might not be able to walk again, but there is some good news. One of his classmates, one of the other three students could not who was shot, uh, rather, he wasn't a classmate, his friend, who was shot. He was released from the hospital just yesterday. His parents saying that uh, he was scared to leave the hospital, and that's just a sign that while you may have uh, these students having that physical recovery and improving in a physical condition, there's still a lot of trauma that they went through, and there's still a lot of work until uh, they're back uh, to being 100 percent. Andrew? Shaq Brewster, that was a great report. Thank you so much. And joining us now is Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Jonathan, thank you. I want to drill down on the study, your new study. After October 7th, only 46 percent of Jewish students felt physically safe on campus, campuses around the country. Uh, I know you're concerned about all ethnic groups, and you've expressed that often, often enough. But with this study zeroing in on the anti-Semitism and Jewish students, is enough being done to protect these kids? Well, I want to talk about that, but I would be remiss if I just didn't note, Andrea, the tragedy of these young men getting shot in Burlington, yeah. Vermont. There is no excuse for people being shot because they're speaking Arabic or showing up at a rally in support of Palestinians, just like there is no excuse for a Jewish man in Los Angeles, an elderly man, to get bludgeoned over the head at a pro-Israel rally because he was Jewish. None of this is normal. No one should think this is okay. Now, the truth is, to your question, no. The colleges are not doing enough to protect their Jewish students. When three out of four Jewish students tell us, Andrea, that they have either seen or experienced themselves an anti-Semitic incident, when I am hearing students tell me from Ivy League universities you know, that they are literally being harassed on campus, that they're hiding in their dorm rooms like Maya from Brown, or that literally they're considering leaving campus altogether. Something is profoundly wrong. And I got to ask, Andrea, why are these university presidents so weak? They seem to lack a kind of moral center that they've had for so many other incidents, and appropriately so. Why, when Jewish students... Why, when Israeli students are being targeted and victimized, is their response a kind of acquiescence or so often silence? And there's also the faculty responsibility, I have to say, because on many of these campuses, uh, presidents or administrators, but the faculty, tenured faculty, have an enormous amount of power for what happens on these campuses, Yeah, depending and what, on the university, of course. And if you can look at what happened at Cornell or at Columbia, or at so many of these places where tenured faculty who are protected by their system of employment, somehow, literally, the students they are supposed to be responsible for in teaching, instead they terrorize and they taunt. We saw it at Stanford. We saw it at Cornell. Now, let me say something. Although there is tenure, Andrea, these presidents do have the authority to remove people from committees to prevent them from getting promotions. There are ways you could tell a professor that you don't want him or her to teach altogether. I mean, I do think that these presidents have kind of hid behind the tenure system, but they are the ones who are responsible and need to be accountable to their children, to their students, and to the parents like me who send our kids to these places. Now, another part of your study found that after October 7th, only 39 percent of Jewish students felt comfortable with others knowing that they're Jewish. We're talking about basic facts of their identity. Yeah. Um, so are these students hiding that they are Jewish to avoid any discrimination or repercussions? Oh, they are. I've, again, I've heard directly from students at, you know, elite institutions who are not wearing their Jewish stars, who are, again, taking off their kippot and wearing hats over their heads. We're talking about Ivy League institutions. Andrea, this is 2023, not 1933. And so, look, I think this story for ADL, though, is 
We're not just going to keep complaining, we're going to start acting. So we launched a call in line to make it easy for students to file Title VI cases, Andrea, that they're being discriminated against. We've had over 260 calls to date. I mean, 260 cases called into us. And next week, as you probably know, a number of these university presidents are being subpoenaed by the House. It's time to hold them accountable once and for all. And I know there's a House hearing that is going to be held on Tuesday yeah. with several of the uh, several of the presidents. Um, Jonathan Greenblatt, uh, let me talk a bit about the Arab and, and Muslim students too. Yeah, uh, because they can be singled out, um, identified if you know. If, Arabic or clothing as they were in Burlington. And they shouldn't be hiding as well. They should not be hiding behind any kind of uh, false screen. No question. The idea that students need to be protected while they walk across campus, whether you are Muslim, whether you are Jewish, this is America. And our pluralism has always been our strength. We cannot allow extremists right-wing extremists, hard-left anti-Zionists. We can't let them tear us apart, Andrea. It's got to stop.